Hey everybody, welcome to Research Methods and Criminology. This is your course overview and a review of the syllabus. So I'll try to go as quickly as I can and I'll put myself on the screen. Hello, I'm really here talking to you and welcome to spring 2022. So um, I wanna make sure you know how to navigate the course as well as some of the required elements from the syllabus. And I will again, show you more tips and tricks on how to be successful in the class. And I'll try to keep the video as short as I can. I know you have lots of videos to watch, but uh, this will be helpful to you. So uh, we'll get started. All right, so this is the main course page. So again, here we have the, the home page. And again, if you go to start, this is where you would find uh, the welcome videos and the syllabus videos, a little bit about the course. There's my bio. Um, and some of my communication stuff. So this is what I promised you. I do have a phone number that you can call and text me at. Um, you can send me text messages. You can send me screenshots and uh, say, hey, I think I'm doing something wrong. Can you take a look at this? You can send that to me. Of course, use uh, proper texting etiquette. I don't want to get messages after a certain hour of the night, just like you probably don't either, or super, super early in the morning, just like you don't either. So, um, so just be, uh, just be professional, be respectful with, um, when you text me and send me stuff. Um, and if I can pick up the phone and respond back quickly, I will. Or, um, sometimes I can't because I'm in an office hour with a student or I'm in a faculty meeting. Um, so occasionally I'm not as available, but if I can answer the phone or text you right back, I'm, I will. So you have very, very instant access to me, which is great. And again, there's the syllabus and uh, stuff like that and learning activities, the grading scheme, how it works. So you'll see that we have this great big paper at the end of class. It's a thousand points. That's a lot. Um, but then along the way, we do labs and paper projects to help you build the paper that are going to give you a little bit of an extra buffer on your grade. Okay. So, um, yep, kind of a high stakes class right let's go back home so to navigate the class you can certainly use the module links on the left but you can um, kind of go week to week where you need to be um, but before we jump into a week i'm going to show you a few other things um, so if you go to this tab over here data sets for those of you that went and bought your software on on the hub and downloaded a, an spss software package on your computer um, you will you will need to also download your data to use for labs and possibly your final paper. So these little tabs have those files that you can actually download and use should you decide to buy the program. Now, again, it's not required. You don't have to. But some people want to. And so if they will go, hey, Jensen, I know we're doing a, a lab and I need the general social survey. Where do I go get those files? And I say, go to the data set tab and you can go download everything that you need for those files. OK, and I put little notes like this is the data for lab two. This is the data for lab six. Um, this is where you get this data. Um, this is the merge data. Um, these are the code books. OK, because the code books describe the data to you. But we'll talk about that more later. So I just wanted to make sure you saw you can go download the data should you need to do that. But most of you really won't because the data is available on uh, the R drive where we do most of our work. OK, so don't just go on a downloading spree and going to get data because it's going to be a lot of extra time and effort that you really don't need to do. So only go download data if you bought the software. Again, 90 percent of students don't buy it, but I show it to people that choose to so they know where to go. OK, so those are kind of these tabs here. Um, let's go into uh, week number one, Intro to Social Research and Statistics. So here you kind of have a description of what we're going to be doing in this module. And then we have our objectives. And you just navigate left to right. And I tell people that's how I would actually finish the, the week. So we work week to week. Um, do your readings next. So I have links to the readings that you need to do. And then I have a video tab, series of videos. These are combinations of videos about research. Um, they're videos that have uh, lab instruction and they are lectures about concepts that the labs are talking about. So they're very short when you see them, like this one's a seven minute video, this one's a four minute video. They're kind of short and sweet. I also included all the PowerPoints that you can have uh, in, in advance if you want to take notes or just keep them for safekeeping. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I have some longer videos kind of toward the end that shows you more detail of, of the software we're going to use and how it works. And then I'll ask you questions about it in a lab or an assignment. So my recommendation is this. 
make sure you watch every video in this class. And it's not just to make me feel better. It's because if you don't, you will miss out on something very crucial that you need in order to complete a lab, finish an assignment, or score well on your final paper. So it is absolutely essential that you watch every single video. In fact, some videos you're going to want to review more than once because maybe this video over here, we ran a chi-square test and suddenly you're in a lab that says, hey, go run a chi-square test. And you're going, oh, how did she do that again? I'm gonna have to go look at that video again to see exactly where that test is and what menu to navigate to and how it works. And so I need a little bit of a refresher on what the chi-square test is. Oh shoot. Well, that's the nice part about having this class online is these videos are parked permanently and you can refer back to them as much as you need to. You can speed them up. You can slow them down. You can swear at me. I'll never know <laughs> if you're mad at me or you don't understand something. Um, but yeah, they are there as a reference to you. So if you need a refresher on what something is, you can always go back to what that is. And I try to kind of label my videos so that you can find them. But if ever you're going, oh shoot, she did this really cool scale where she took all these drugs and she put all these questions on drugs and built them together into how many drugs are you taking scale? Where did she do that? What video was that? I can't remember and I've been searching everywhere. Don't spend hours and hours trying to search my videos. I probably know the video right off the top of my head and I can say, oh, yep, that's the video over in module seven and it's called this. And you go, oh, thanks, Jensen. Uh, most of my videos are also available on YouTube. So you can go to my YouTube channel and you can also kind of sift that if that's easier to navigate. Then again, you'll also find a lot of other videos from the other classes I teach. So maybe that's more than you want to navigate, but it is a, a YouTube based video so that you can watch it on your phone. You can skip ahead, skip back. And it's kind of nice, but I'm going to get off the camera now. Okay, here I go. I'll just go in the corner. <laughs> I'm still here. So uh, make sure you watch every video. It is really important. And I tell students not watching a video is the equivalent of ditching class and not going to lecture. Um, I, I know I always felt really behind when I was in class and I missed a class because it just stressed me out. It, it made it so I was lost to the next class. I didn't know what we were doing. And it, the same thing happens with an online class and not watching videos. It's, it's like missing a lecture. And my videos are very sequential. They really build on each other. So if you miss one, you could get lost in the next one. So if you get behind, just stay on track and catch up in order because you're gonna be a lot better off and eventually catch up and, and you won't be as confused. Okay, so those are the videos. And then the very last tab is where you're gonna get your work done. So here we have assignment one, getting started, um, which is kind of like getting into SPSS and telling me how the program works and answering questions about it. We also have a getting to know you discussion post, which is, you know, just telling me about yourself and, and your classmates um, and responding to each other, starting to build some rapport with each other. And then I also usually have a video that's step-by-step -step help with lab one that'll actually walk you through the lab and all the navigation and the menus and the software. So you can follow along and pause me as you complete the lab. And it'll basically help you do the lab with me together, which is nice. And then basically here is lab one at the bottom data sets. So that's the first lab that we're going to do. So that's essentially a module. So again, work left to right, objectives, readings, videos, and then labs. Um, if you go straight to the lab, I'm going to ask you questions that came out of some of these lectures and you're going to go, wait a minute, what is that? So don't skip it. It's more confusion than it's worth. Okay. So again, work left to right. All right. Going back to the homepage. So these are all the different modules. You're going to notice we only have 14 modules because the last two weeks of class, I leave you alone. Um, you have a final paper to write that's worth a thousand points and that will be roughly 20 to 25 pages long. This is probably the biggest paper you have ever written in college and it deserves a lot of extra attention and work. So I have learned as a professor for over 10 years now that I need to leave my students alone to let them work and get their editing done and finish their final things they're working on to get the paper prepared for turn in. So that doesn't mean I'm gone. I'm definitely available to you. You can text me, call me, you can Zoom with me, we can go over things, um, but I don't need to keep throwing assignments and labs at you all the way up until finals week because that's gonna take away your time and energy from a really good final paper. So we only have 14 modules the last two weeks because. A semester 16 weeks, right? The last two weeks kind of go right up into finals week and that gives you time to prepare a good paper.
But the nice part is we write the paper as we go. So make sure you turn in those little sections on time so I can give you feedback in a timely manner and it'll help you score higher on your final paper too. But yeah, that's essentially the class. Um, all the places you need to go to find things. Uh, there are sometimes weeks that we don't have a lab, but you have an assignment. Okay. So um, sometimes I have a tab that says lab, and this is a specific lab for lab two. I'm in week number two. And then I also have a, a tab that says assignments. And I might say, nope, there's no assignment this week. Go to the lab tab. So just make sure you check every uh, tab that's there so you don't miss anything. Because sometimes I need you to do a very short assignment before you do your lab. And if you just go straight to the lab, you're going to miss it. Okay. So um, that's, again, essentially the class and how to find my contact information, my phone number, um, all that kind of stuff. But let's go to the syllabus. Okay. So I just launched the syllabus. Sorry, I had a little sneeze coming on. Um, I didn't want you to hear that. But uh, this is the syllabus. This is the PDF version that you click on for spring 2022. Um, this will give you the description of the class. And as you scroll down, sorry, um, there's my bio, a little bit about me. It also has the required software. You can see it's SPSS grad pack version 26 or higher. Again, remember it's the standard grad pack, um, or you can purchase it on the hub. There's no required textbook. Um, these are our course learning objectives. Um, so we're going to be doing statistics a lot in this class, but we're also just going to be looking at how this applies to the world of research, right? Um, and don't be afraid of statistics. I've taken four different statistics classes before I graduated, and I hated every one of them until the very last class. And it's because I had a professor that taught in an applied manner to help me do real problem solving and manipulate data and do variable construction and actually use it in a way that made sense to me. He used layman's terms and not highly technical mathematical terms. And I was able to see how it worked from the place that I was. And then I fell in love with it. I loved statistics. I loved research. And I started working on data and variables and being a statistician for a living. Um, but that really worked for me. So I, I've emulated that professor and tried to kind of um, tribute him in this class because I could tell that the way he taught this class um, was really powerful and it made me not hate statistics anymore. So that's my goal is to make you um, see the value of statistics and really how fun it is. It's kind of like puzzling and uh, pulling stuff apart, shoving stuff together, um, applying things. It's it's really kind of fun to, to be able to work with data in this way. Um, but I'm not going to go through all the learning objectives right now. Um, but again, we're going to be doing our labs and our lectures in one big format in a four credit class. This is the exact same class as online as it is for on campus. The only difference is they go to a three credit lecture class and a one credit lab hour in a, in a computer lab. But essentially it's the same class. We do have some differences of some things we do, but we're all using statistical software. We're all using um, research and statistics, learning about ethics, learning about skills, and about how to do research in criminology. And we're all writing a final paper at the end that's a really big research report. So you are getting the same degree as your on-campus counterparts, okay? It's the same one. We're just doing ours all in one session. They're doing two sessions. And they have to get their lab done at the end of the session. You have the luxury of getting to fast forward or backtrack on the videos and revisit things. Um, just again, a few things on the syllabus. Um, you'll have these sections inside your final research paper that you're going to prepare. And again, the paper is around 20 to 25 pages. Um, I tell people, don't worry about page length right now because as you build these sections, it just kind of grows. And then you assemble it all at the end. I always loved classes that helped me get my work done a little at a time. So I wasn't overwhelmed trying to write this big paper the night before. This is not a paper you can write the night before. It's not going to happen. I've seen many, many students try it and they fail miserably. It is terrible. Um, and they realize the next morning that pulling the all-nighter was basically useless. This is a, a very technical paper. It has tables, it has data, it has analysis, it has a lot of formatting requirements. You have to use APA citation and it's, it's high stakes. It's pretty involved. So you're not gonna write this the night before. We're gonna start actively writing this paper as early as February. So we're gonna try to get after it a little at a time. Um, I don't do quizzes or exams. So some of you that hate that are gonna 
appreciate that. Uh, we do labs. We do assignments in labs. These are your training and practice. And again, they are all sequential and um, I'll score them uh, as quickly as I can and give you feedback and answer key kind of stuff. So that way you can see how you did. Um, we have eight labs and four assignments that we do. And then we work on paper sections for the class. Um, I have a few other things. I have an anti-plagiarism assignment that I require you to do as we get closer to starting to draft the paper. Um, I will not accept your final paper until you've turned in the anti-plagiarism assignment. That is required. Um, and it's basically a little tutorial that um, makes sure you know how to cite properly. Um, this is our course pacing and the modules. So basically we do about a module a week and this will kind of help keep you on track. Um, all assignments are always due Sunday night. So um, you have between Monday when we start the week until the very next Sunday, Sunday night by 11.59 p.m. to submit your work. And that's labs, assignments, paper, projects, all that kind of stuff. Sunday night before midnight. Um, but yeah, we definitely will have that week off for spring break, right? Um, so I don't assign things for spring break. But you can work on your paper during spring break if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, grading. So this is the grading scheme. Um, and again, your lab assignments are 16% of your grade. Your research paper projects are about 20%. And then the remainder of the grade really is your research paper. So this is a big bulk of the grade. And these two things kind of help prepare you to write a good research paper. I also give you sample papers to look at. Whoops, I clicked too far. I give you sample papers to look at. And um, I give you templates to use so you're not dealing with a lot of formatting and stuff like that. Um, so you have a lot of helps and supports to help you build this thing. Um, I already talked about the writing requirement in the last video, but this gives you more detail if you need that. Um, again, I always have a disclaimer on my syllabi. Um, these are my current plans. As we go through the semester, those plans may need to change to enhance class learning. Um, I don't penalize students if I have to make a change. I try to give you more time to do something or extend a due date if needed. So um, I try to be as fair as I can, because if I'm going to make a change, I don't want you to have to shuffle everything to get something done sooner than you had expected. Um, but yeah, sometimes things happen and, and we have to do that. And certainly, you know, people have medical issues or illness or what have you. And just uh, let me know in advance if we need to make accommodations for those things. That also is the same um, to be said for any learning accommodations that you need, should you require learning accommodations. Um, these are my policies for class. Uh, make sure you communicate often. Um, again, I'm trying to respond to you within 24 to 48 hours. Um, you can get SPSS at apps.ufl.edu. And uh, again, these are resources for campus, um, for being a student on campus. I'm not going to go through those in detail. Um, use good etiquette when you're reaching out to your classmates as lab partners or to me. Um, and uh, yeah. These are just, again, resources, phone numbers. Uh, you can submit drafts of your paper to the writing studio and they can help edit for you. Um, definitely is a good idea. That's not a bad idea to do that. And then again, library stuff. Um, you matter, we care. If you run into crisis or distress during the semester, they can help kind of advocate for you with the dean's office if you have to do anything drastic, like withdraw from the class or, or change your schedule. We hope that doesn't happen, but they are there to help you if you run into those situations. Um, the course is 100% online, and I showed you kind of what it looked like. Um, attendance, obviously I don't keep attendance in this class, but I can see your activity log in Canvas as to how often you access things. So I can see what you're doing and where you click, so just keep that in mind. Um, make sure you're adhering to uh, the, your requirements, the things you're supposed to do. Um, of course, here's the help desk, their website and phone number if you run into some issues there. Um, you have to provide... Uh, documentation for um, for making up work. It must be a university recognized reason. Um, things like illness, holidays, death in the family, um, those kind of things. And um, I'm a pretty flexible person. So um, just let me know and we'll make arrangements together on, on what to do. Um, this is my, our COVID-19 policy. You've probably seen this in past semesters, um, if for any reason uh, that comes up. And then um, again, make sure you cite properly. Uh, be, please be careful about plagiarism. You can work together on things, but you're responsible for your own work. Um, and then, of course, I appreciate 
uh, feedback at the end of the semester through course evaluations, and I actually give you extra credit for getting your evaluations done. Um, so that might boost up your paper score a little bit too. This is my Zoom page. So um, it tells people, hey, make sure you're on time, make sure your computer's charged, um, use virtual backgrounds. You don't have to use your camera if you don't want to. Uh, make sure you're dressed properly if you're using your camera. Um, you can use the chat, log on a few minutes in advance, uh, don't share Zoom links with people, uh, be attentive, and we'll get after the things you need. So mostly I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with students via Zoom, but I can do group sessions too. If you and a lab partner want to go together, we can do that. Um, this is the page you go to. It's login.apps.ufl.edu. And I'll show you this page in just a moment in live real time. But again, here in the syllabus, all files and work can be saved to the M drive. This is your permanent student file storage. So let's take a moment to do that. Hey, Gators. So I'm in another web page. This is login.apps.ufl.edu. And basically, you just sign on here with your GatorLink credentials, OK? Um, and you hit log on, okay? And of course you have to authenticate using Duo Push. So you'll need to have cell phone or otherwise handy. And I'm gonna hit approve. And now I'm on the page. So um, generally your page will look more like this. You'll have all these applications. These are all different software applications that we use on campus. And these are campus-wide licenses that are available to students so they can do their work for different classes. Okay, so this looks a little intimidating, right? We're really only using two areas. We're using the R drive and you can actually put a star in the corner so you can kind of make it a favorite so that you don't have to look at all this when you get there. And then we're also using SPSS statistics and you can put a little star in that one too. So that way, when you first log in, you can go to favorites and then you only have to see two things that you're gonna use in this class. So first, let's take a look at the R drive. The R drive is basically a virtual drive on the server. And in here, um, this is where you can drag and drop files if you need to, or upload to this drive if you need to. Um, so again, um, if you have data that you're getting from other sources for your final paper, whoops, um, you would drag and drop it to that class. For some, I have to update my, my Citrix receiver really quick, and I don't wanna do that in the middle of the video, but. Um, but that's where you would do that. And I send you instructions on how to do that. So if you need to add files to your drive to work on for class or for your paper, you can do that. Um, and then you also have SPSS right here. Okay. So one thing I tell people is SPSS takes forever to open and load. Um, it's kind of a ram hog. So um, give yourself time to kind of get in there and, and open it. But essentially, once it launches the program, you'll have a couple little prompts at the beginning um, of the program launch that you just have to kind of click through. Um, but I'll show you the M drive, I'll show you the R drive and where all our files live. And I do this again in the lab videos too, so that way you know where to go. Um, but uh, yeah, it, see, it takes forever to open. <laughs> um, but yeah, essentially all the data you need for your labs are already kind of built on that drive, okay? So when the program opens, you'll eventually see these kinds of screens. These are kind of just welcome screens. This is IBM SPSS statistics that we're gonna be using. We don't really need this screen, so we're just gonna close it. And essentially you're gonna have a data set window and you're also gonna have an output window that you'll start using for class, okay? So in here, um, if we go to file and open data, um, this will bring you to this window here. And if you click inside this menu, you may have to scroll around a little bit, you can take yourself to an M drive, okay? So you'll notice the M drive um, is, it has your Gator link in there, okay? Um, and this will give you uh, file storage that you need for class. So you can use this just like a virtual desktop um, to save your files as you're working on them. So you'll recognize it because your Gator link credentials are there. But whenever you're making changes to data or working in a lab and you have to stop and, and reconvene the next day, save your stuff to the M drive. Um, here's the R drive. The, this is a several terabyte drive that stores all our files for class, okay? So you'll go to courses and then spring and then data, and then you'll find all the folders and data sets and files that we need to do our labs, okay? 
And again, I have this for you in the lab, but I just wanted to show you that everything you need is already here. Okay, so that's a little bit about SPSS and what it's going to look like once you're in the virtual server. So again, um, just wanted to show these two things to you so you were familiar with them. Okay, let's get back to the syllabus. All right, so that's apps.ufl.edu. And I'm going to move myself. <laughs> Um, this is our course schedule. You'll see this both on Canvas, but this is also um, a schedule in the syllabus that kind of shows you every Sunday something's due. With the exception of this week, I need to do um, a brief introductory post session on Friday so I can get to know you. But basically everything else is due on Sunday, including the final paper. So I tell people on the first day of class, you know the due date of your final paper. It's April 24th. So that is Sunday of the week of finals week. So I always give you the weekend before finals week to do any finishing touches you need to do on your paper. So Sunday, April 24th is the final due date. And then you can see kind of over time, we submit these projects um, as early as March, right? And then we even do a few of these other ones in February and January to help get you ready for the final paper, okay? So that is the syllabus. That is the class, and uh, I look forward to getting to know you. So it'll be a busy semester. It'll be a lot of fun, but I am available to you. Don't be shy. Text me. Call me. Um, set up an appointment for an office hour. It's, it'll be great to get to know you. And, and again, a lot of times this class is perfect for letters of recommendation, for references, because it's a skillful class, and I can tell employers or law schools or future graduate schools of all the cool stuff you know how to do. So this is a great class and a great professor for the kind of stuff we do together to ask for a letter from. So just keep that in mind. And it's good for us to get to know each other over the course of the semester. So if you're in need of letter writers or references, reach out and uh, we'll try to, to include that for you. So good luck this semester and we'll see you next time.